I've managed to cure the SIBO that I didn't know I had and uh, by doing that I've actually managed to cure and completely resolve the IBS diarrhea that has been plaguing me for decades and that's what I'm going to talk about today. Hi there, my name is Sue. If you've not visited my channel before, I um, have been on a carnival diet now for about 21 months and uh, the reason that I started on the carnival diet, one of the big reasons, was to try and resolve my gut health and it seems that I have pretty much done that. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. So let's talk about SIBO. I had heard of SIBO and I knew what it was, but I didn't think it was relevant um, to me because my issues were with my large intestine and not my small intestine and so I didn't pay a lot of attention to it but then what happened was once I started on the carnivore diet um, initially the first couple of months I was on carnivore my bowel was quite a lot better and I thought oh yeah this is this is good this is going to help and then it got a lot worse and um, the diarrhea became harder to manage but there was a whole lot of other things that were improving with my health and I was feeling better so I kind of knew I was on the right track but it was just the the, the gut health and the diarrhea that was really um, kind of getting me down so I started looking into information around histamine because I had come to the conclusion that histamine was um, part of the reason that I was having so much issue with um, diarrhea and then I ended up all covered in this histamine rash and so that really got me looking because it took about two months for that rash to go away and it was absolutely miserable living with it so when I was looking into histamine I started coming across more and more information about SIBO and eventually I started to think well maybe SIBO is part of my problem and what happened was I ended up stumbling across um, someone who was talking about SIBO and they mentioned Dr Mark Pimentel and how his work was showing that SIBO was the cause of most cases of IBS diarrhea. So then I went and listened to Dr Mark Pimentel and learned that yes indeed most cases as far as they're concerned of IBS diarrhea are caused by SIBO so I started learning more about SIBO and how to resolve that and and what happened was as I learned more and as I listened to more people I started implementing a few things and I have seemingly got rid of that and got rid of my diarrhea at the same time and that's what I'm going to talk about in this video how I've actually done that. So first I just want to talk about what I've learned about SIBO over the last 12 months. Just a couple of things. So what I've learned is that it's really hard to get SIBO cured using conventional ways. A lot of people will go to a doctor or a naturopath and they have kind of slightly different ways of managing it. So doctors will tend to, if they know about it, a lot of GPs don't know about it um, really, but if they do, they'll send you off for testing and then they'll diagnose you with SIBO and then they use antibiotics to try and manage it. And people might get a good result initially, but often it comes back. And it's the same with naturopaths. So naturopaths will generally treat it using antibiotic herbs but again, for a lot of people, it'll, it'll, they'll get some relief for a while uh, and then it comes back. Now, the, the reason that I think that it comes back for most people is that they either don't change their diet and their lifestyle or they do briefly until it's all, or it seems like it's resolved and then they go back to what they were doing before. And the, what they're doing basically is they're going back to the things that caused their SIBO in the first place. And I'm going to talk about those causes in just a minute. Um, so the other thing that I've learned about SIBO of course is that it is the cause of most cases of chronic IBS diarrhea and it's believed that often it starts with a case of food poisoning. So food poisoning kicks it off and then the chronic IBS diarrhea kicks in and there is often seemingly no relief for that and it can go on for decades as it did in my case. So the causes of SIBO the obvious one of course is antibiotics so um, everyone knows that antibiotics messes with your gut flora and uh, it can def antibiotics can definitely um, cause or contribute to SIBO. Another class of drugs that people don't often realize is anti-inflammatories or NSAID non-steroidal non anti-inflammatory drugs. So these are over-the-counter drugs like ibuprofen and Voltaren, uh, naproxen, 
and others and people take those you know they might have a sore neck or a sore back or some kind of injury and they take them thinking that they're not doing any any harm because they're over the counter but they actually are worse than antibiotics for killing off your uh, microbiome in your gut they do a lot of damage and I, I mean I see it in my business I'm working with people every day who have pain and injury and they take these things like like lollies without thought you know and you know when if I say to them that those drugs are actually really quite harmful they're surprised because they don't realize that that's the case so they are a common contributor to SIBO as well other other causes include things like low stomach acid and drugs that lower stomach acid and that is because when the stomach acid is too low and we're eating food with you know that has bacteria on it or fungi on it you know molds and that sort of thing what should happen is when that when those bacteria and molds hit the stomach acid that they're killed off but if we have low stomach acid then sometimes they can get through the stomach and into the small intestine and then multiply and um, breed and do their thing in there um, another factor that can cause or contribute is h pylori which is the bacteria that um, causes stomach ulcers and the last one is uh, eating too often over and overeating so what happens there is if we eat too often and we're overeating uh, then that can affect the mmc which is the migrating motor complex the mmc um, is the basically it's like the peris, it's like a peristalsis that's moving the food through the small intestine because you've got to remember the small intestine is 24 feet long so it's got a long way to go and so you have this wave like motion that's supposed to push the food through but if that stops working properly if that's uh, not doing what it's supposed to do then the food gets can sit in areas of the small intestine and again bacteria can overgrow and that can cause or contribute to SIBO my history the things that i believe uh, got me into the situation that i was in started a long time ago so i had a lot of antibiotics as a child because i had bad tonsils and ended up having my tonsils out um, and then when i was um, a teenager and in my early 20s i was having a lot of gut issues my doctor eventually decided that i had possibly a stomach ulcer or just too much stomach acid and he put me on a drug called Tagamet which I was taking for two years and um, so that of course lowered my stomach acid and set me up as well for SIBO because um, I used to eat too often I was always a snacker and I used to overeat I was a real carb and sugar addict right from when I was a child and so I think that the MMC was possibly messed up by all of that as well and then uh, taking a, a stomach acid lowering drug possibly let things into my small intestine that shouldn't have been there as well uh, the things that I had going going for me was that I didn't have any antibiotics after 1990 that's the the last time I had antibiotics was 34 years ago and I've never taken any of those anti-inflammatory drugs uh, they just don't make sense to me I know that they're dangerous so they're not something that I'll ever put into my body so let's talk about now how I have managed to resolve all of this and how I've got rid of the, the SIBO that was causing my um, IBS diarrhea. So the first thing that I did obviously is that I had started eating a carnivore diet. And the reason that the carnivore diet helps is because it eliminates all the sugars and the grains and the processed foods and the seed oils that uh, can be causing or contributing to SIBO. Um, the next thing that I did was that I started taking berberine so I took berberine for one month when I when I realized that SIBO was probably an issue I took berberine and I also took um, oregano oil at the beginning as well when I was taking berberine for about the first couple of weeks I think I took uh, oregano oil in a capsule uh, once or twice a day and the berberine for about a month now when I first started taking the berberine what I noticed was that my stomach was making a lot of noise and doing a lot of grumbling and especially the first 48 hours it was pretty wild and it was like there was a real war going on in there and um, it kept waking me up during the night because it was still going and it was still really noisy eventually that settled down a bit but my belly did a lot of grumbling the whole pretty much the whole time I was on berberine 
Uh, but yeah, I took that for a month and then I started taking a motility supplement. So motility supplements, um, what they do is they help to get their MMC working. So I started taking the, the motility supplement in the evening and in the morning on an empty stomach. And I will link to these supplements and things that I'm talking about below. Um, and so what that, that basically helps to get that peristalsis all working properly. And um, I took that for probably about three or four months. I've stopped now, but it would have been probably at least four months that I took that. Now, the next thing that I did, um, so as I said, all these were bits and pieces that I came across listening to other people talking about SIBO. And the bits that made sense to me, I've implemented. Now, the, the, the next thing that I did was that I came across Dr. William Davis, who has written a book called Supergut, and I have linked to that below. There's, his book's definitely worth reading. Now, what he advocates is using fermented um, dairy products, and they are fermented with specific bacterias, uh, specific strains of bacterias, and they're fermented for 36 hours. And the reason for that is to get a really high CFU count of these specific bacterias. Now, he's had samples of these yogurts tested. And he said that um, these yogurts, because they're fermented for 36 hours, and they're, they're using a prebiotic in there to feed the bacteria, the CFU count goes up to around 200 billion per half cup. If you look at any pre, uh, probiotics on the market, you'll find that a lot of them contain millions of bacteria. Some of them might contain 5 billion or even 10 or 20 billion, but there are none that come anywhere close to 200 billion. So by eating this yogurt every day, you're getting massive numbers of these bacteria into your digestive system. And these are bacteria that should be colonizing our small intestine, and that's the reason that he's chosen them. They are also bacteria that create their own antibacterials that um, kill off some of the bad bacteria or lower their numbers. So I've been having that um, yogurt pretty much every day for the last maybe six months, I guess, um, either the SIBO yogurt or El Rotary yogurt. El Rotary is what I'm eating at the moment. The other things that he talks about in his book, which I implemented, were having green tea with cloves and adding a prebiotic fiber to that. So um, I use inulin in my yogurts and I've got, uh, I'll link to um, the video, a video that I've done on how to make the yogurt below this um, below this video. Now I use inulin in the yogurt and in my green tea I use acacia fiber. He actually recommends FOSS but when I tried FOSS it actually um, didn't really agree with my belly so I've just stuck with the acacia fiber and that seems to work really well. Um, and so the green tea with cloves I had that for about probably three or four months. I've stopped the cloves now and I just have the green tea in the morning with acacia fiber at this stage and I add some collagen to that as well because collagen and gelatin are really good for healing the gut and the small intestine as well. And then the last thing that I've implemented or gone back to is eating fermented foods. So I used to eat quite a lot of fermented foods prior to carnivore and then I stopped. Uh, I used to make my own sauerkraut and I think that was one of the things that kind of helped to keep me going over the years. Um, so I have started making sauerkraut again and um, I have also had some other fermented veg here and there and also in making my own homemade kefir as well off and on. Um, I've stopped again at the moment but I have made that off and on as well and the reason for that is by having the different um, fermented foods and different bacteria, they help to boost the good bacteria um, in your gut. I mean they're like, it's like in a little ecosystem in there and there are bacterias that help others to um, survive and they help to keep the bad bacterias in check. So uh, it's a good thing to have a variety of fermented foods in your diet. So that's um, that's basically what I've done that has cured this. My, my IBS diarrhea, as I said, has stopped about, or it slowed right down, uh, about a week into taking the berberine. And then it's just got better, it just got better and better, and I've had no diarrhea now for months. Um, my gut health is just continuing to improve. 
things that used to upset it like coffee you know if I drank tea, decaf it would upset my gut and it would get a bit inflamed that's that seems to have stopped um, my digestive system is much more um, happy these days and easier to keep it happy which is absolutely fantastic and so I'm picking if I carry on with what I'm doing for um, a while it's just going to get better and better and so going forward my plan is to continue with no pharmaceutical drugs so I haven't taken any pharmaceutical drugs for many years with the exception of Panadol which I take very occasionally if I'm absolutely desperate and the only other thing that I'm, I've taken that I'm taking at the moment is methylene blue which was actually the first um, pharmaceutical drug but it's not really a, a drug as in like the other drugs and it's available over the counter you can buy it on Amazon and that and I've got links to the methylene blue below as well below all my videos it has amazing benefits and I've done a couple of videos on that and we'll be doing more on the results that I'm getting with that um, so I'm obviously going to continue on a carnivore diet or ketovore or meat based type diet avoiding you know sugars and seed oils and processed foods so none of that stuff that's going to mess my gut up this is my plan for the rest of my life uh, and um, I could plan to continue taking ferments of some sort you know every day some sort of fermented veg and quite possibly the SIBO yogurt or l or kefir uh, one of those just probably, I will probably alternate them I may go off them for a while because I'm, I'm not sure I want to lose some weight but I'm iffy about going off them as well because I um want to um, don't want to mess things up with my gut so we'll wait and see how things go over time so as I said I'm, I'm confident that I can keep things as they are and moving forward getting better and that is because you know I am not doing the things that caused it in the first place and I think that's the mistake that people make is they go back to the diet they were on they go back to the way they've always eaten they go back to taking whatever drugs and antibiotics and things again and it just kicks it all off again so if you have any um, comments or questions about what I've spoken about here please put them below and I will get to them as soon as I can if you enjoyed this video um, and you would like to support my channel make sure to subscribe um, and then by liking and sharing that also helps lots um, if you'd like to support my channel in any other way I have suggestions various ways to do that under all my videos and it's just things like joining my channel or purchasing some merchandise from my shop uh, that helps me to create more content and um, so I thank you very much for watching and listening to me today and I will talk to you again another day goodbye for now